Welcome to Whitehall. I'm standing in the Port River building that was constructed around about 1500. At the time Henry VII may have been king, maybe Henry VIII had already taken over the throne. It wasn't built as a house. Houses now tend to have sort of conventional plans and so did Tudor houses and Whitehall doesn't really fit with a house plan. It was probably something else, maybe just possibly a wool warehouse. Wool was a major part of the economy in the early Tudor period. At that time, Cheam was a small village well away from London was probably fairly prosperous because it had a large area of grassland up on the North Downs which was regarded as first-class sheep pasture. Although Whitehall wasn't built as a house, it became one in the course of the 16th century. It was not a very grand house, certainly not a gentry level house and it was then extended and modified over several centuries producing a complicated architectural patchwork. We don't know who lived here when Whitehall first became a home, but there is one clue to the beliefs of the early occupiers. This is the graffiti on a door, which was originally in the attic. It includes the word remember, which was the last word spoken by Charles I before he was executed and also a kite, which might be a dig at Cromwell, uh, a man who'd flown high but whose string might break and he might crash. The Killicks took over the house in 1742 and in the 19th century the occupants were largely women and they took particular care of the building and its contents so that the structure survived to be bought by the council in 1963. The council turned the house into a museum, which has recently benefited from a substantial heritage lottery fund grant. It continues to be opened by London Borough of Sutton Cultural Services for the public to appreciate and enjoy. And then the letters, <laughs> you know, what do they mean? No idea, not a clue. Um, You'll probably never know. It's very likely we'll never know.